got the joy deep down in my heart. I'm waking up with your love from the start. I'm chasing the rainbow through the rain. Are you a parent of older teens or young adults? Are you looking for ways to reconnect or continue to build your relationship with them? If so, my friends, this program is just for you as we gather to hear about connecting conversations for families. Hello, everyone, and welcome back to Coffee, conversations of friends of faith to equip and encourage. I'm Kim Crable, so delighted to have you on our program today. No doubt, we all want to communicate more effectively, am I right? Especially with our children, whether they be teens or adults. But sometimes, have you found out, sometimes it's a bit more difficult than just talking, than just using our words. And for that reason, I called in some help for tonight. So on this episode of Coffee, we have joining us Patty Reed. Patty is a coach. She's an author. She is a, a speaker. Patty is a certified coach in conversation, conversational intelligence. I just love that. That you're going to love. We're going to love discovering this topic. Patty has spent the last 30 years leading and serving and building people, both professionally and personally. Patty's first book, which we will talk about a lot tonight, is called Face to Face, Smart Conversations with Yourself, Your Teenager, and Your Adult Child. I am so happy and pleased to welcome to coffee, Patty Reed. Patty, thank Hello, you. Hello, Kim. Thank Patty, you. Thanks for stopping by for coffee. Absolutely. I love that acronym. I love that. You know, isn't it the best when, when yes. I moved from the deep south into more of the northern states, I was thinking, how do I, what can I use as a Bible study theme that doesn't seem so, I don't know, it seems more welcoming. Yeah. And so I thought, well, I'm just going to stay with what I used in, in the South, which was coffee yes. conversation. So it really is worked out really well. And, and I just love it. So it's the title of the radio show, TV show, and many the other things that I do. And, and that's what I'm all about is conversations. And so are you. You're all about yes. conversations. And equipping and encouraging. That's great. <laughs> Absolutely. Patty, when I was reading your uh, bio, one of the things that really stuck out in my mind before we get into yeah. deep, the deep, uh, the depth of your book, you you said that your desire is to help individuals build trust mm -hmm. in their everyday conversations. I love that because trust mm -hmm. in conversations. I mean, that to me, that's what makes a conversation worth having. So tell me, what does that mean to you? What does that mean to us? Well, again, the um, beachhead, so to speak, right, was for the older teen and the young adult. And those are, you know, can be challenging years. Yeah. And, yeah, and um, there's just what I have found is that so many necessarily having the relationships with their kids once they leave the home. And so my question is, you know, why is that? And so when I went through the training with conversational intelligence, I really learned about where trust lives and trust really lives in the front part of our brain and um, that is where it's built. And there's things you can do in the relationship, in the conversation uh, to help foster truth. You know, we don't have perfect relationships and we struggle with our spouses and our kids and everything, but there are practical things you can do to start now to build that trust. We always get to begin again, right? I love his mercies are new every morning. And yeah. so we get to do that in our relationship. Yes. And it's, and it's never too late. That's, that's mm -hmm. one of the most hopeful things I think that we can say to people in whatever situation they're in is that it is, it is never too late. You can start now. It's how you, it's finishing strong, right? It's yes. Finishing yes. Strong. yes. I love okay. that. So, so is that the why behind the book? Uh, uh it's the why behind the book. I, I'd never even thought about writing a book <laughs> and um, I love personal growth. I love um, helping people move really from where they are to where God wants them to be. And so in 2017, 
uh, we were officially empty nesters and my daughter had left to move to New York and, you know, pursue her dreams. And so I was you know, having my quiet time in the morning and talking to Jesus about you know, what are we doing today? And um, I felt like he said to me, I want you to write a book. And I thought, surely he's talking to the wrong person <laughs> because I don't write. Uh, however, we had a little bit of a wrestling match and he won, of course. Uh-huh. And when I started researching books on uh, really the older teen adult child relationship, mm-hmm. honestly, Kim, there is not a lot out there. Yeah. And we have so much for the babies and the toddlers and the tweens and the teens. But, you know, this is a whole other phase that we get to. And we want to, you know, be connected to our kids. And there's just not a lot out there. So that really um, sparked me, so to speak, to go, okay, God, how, how can I take my training and use that to help parents stay connected to their kids? And it's I, I like what you said or that, that you had noticed that there was a few books there because that is such a critical time. Yes. Uh, when kids go off to college or when or when they first get married, you find yourself in a whole different situation mm-hmm. uh, before you, you've been the parent. A lot of times you've been the only one. And now all mm-hmm. of a sudden your men. Your, your boys are, are becoming men, you know, your girls are becoming young women. And all of a sudden there's a different dynamics. As a Christian counselor, I, I think I told you before, I work with, I, I, it seems like you have all the answers for everyone but yourself, right? <laughs> and do this, this, and this, and then you try doing it. And it seems to work perfectly for everyone else. But I don't know, there's just such a personal attachment to it when you're doing it yourself. And so, but I love that you're going to give us some of these pointers that you have used in your relationship that's going to help us. And and for those who are listening, this this is a critical time and you don't want to give up, you know, that relationship. You've been that parent, you've nurtured all these years. You don't you, you just want to be able to navigate this a little bit. So tell me more, Patty, if you will, tell me more about this conversational intelligence and what is it? Yeah. So um, there was a woman named Judith Glaser and she wrote the book Conversational Intelligence and her life work and conversational intelligence is um, a body of work that helps you understand what conversations open up the brain for trust and what conversations close them down. And so when you are aware of that, you have the opportunity to impact and influence the conversation in a much greater way. Can you give us an example? Of like a conversation or just something that would close down or, you know, or something that would help build the trust. Oh, absolutely. (laughs) Well, I can say that telling, selling and yelling absolutely closes things, (laughs) closes conversation down. Um, So let me go ahead and back up a little bit. You know, obviously, as moms, uh, you know, we're doing a lot of instructing and we're doing a lot of telling and I'm guilty of yelling at times. And so, again, as you start to go through and they get older, we have to start to make some adjustments in the relationship because that is not going to work anymore. So what I like to say is we need to start asking, listening and responding. Mm -hmm. asking, listening, and responding, asking more questions, because a lot of times we, well, I did this anyway, but, you know, we, you know, I think about how I was raised and how I was as a teenager, and it was before I knew Jesus, (laughs) and so I was thinking, what what are they doing, and you come in your head about what might be happening when it's not really happening, so it's just important to to start to make adjustments, to really become curious and start to ask more questions and let the rope out a bit because they're becoming adults. Yes. And and let's talk about that, Patty, with questions. I know one of the things that I help um, some of my people do is um, ask the questions that that are open-ended questions, you know, so let's, let's talk about that, how important it is to uh, begin to think about what type of questions we want to ask. Right, right. Absolutely. And I do, I, I write about that in the book. There's a, uh, there are short little chapters or devotions, and I have one on conversations and I encourage people to ask open-ended questions. Uh, help me understand. Yes. Um, tell me more. Yes. Make you feel, uh, 
what would you think is best or what would you like to do, right? So that is so important instead of, again, telling. Telling shuts us down. Yes. And asking, I mean, two children, my daughter is 24 and my son is 29. And because of blood, sweat and tears and prayer and lots of things, Mm -hmm. I mean, we really do have great relationships, but it took work, you know, as they started to get older and we've got to let go and release. But honestly, I'm so grateful for, you know, the training that I had gone through because I love my kids and I want to stay connected to them. And I'm just grateful that we can, and, and they're, they're a boy and a girl. And so the boys are, you know, Brian is totally different than hope. Hope tells me everything. And Ryan tells me minimal, but we have a great relationship. <laughs> but, Patty, what, let's just say someone is listening and they're the, the uh, conversation, the communication is just shut down. Mm-hmm. Um, there's just, there's just been hurt or, or a distance or mm-hmm. lack of trust or, or maybe the parent hasn't really learned to adjust. I'll tell you, that was really hard for me, mm-hmm. especially when the boys, I have two boys. Yeah. So as they went off to college, um, adjusting and realigning and, and walking that little tight line that you did. Um, I found myself really t- navigating that in a very soft way. And I, I fell off many times. I mean, I, I learned the hard way many times. Uh, thank the Lord. They, for, they forgave me for that, but let's just say that there's been, there's no communication. What would you say to a parent that could give them hope? What are some little things or something that, maybe they could begin to do to open up communication again? Mm -hmm. Well, first I would say get my book. (laughs) Definitely purchase my book because um, I give lots of, you know, just stories and information in there. Um, But what I like to tell people, because I get to coach people at my church also, I'm on the pastoral care team. And so I do deal with other, you know, parents and their adult children or their kids. And there's been these situations, right, where they don't have communication or, or, they, it's not where they want it to be. And really where I begin, Kim, is with, you know, so what? what is it that you might need to do to show humility that you want to begin again? Yes. Right? And you know what? Don't expect anything. Just maybe you write a note. Maybe you leave a voicemail, you know, a voicemail, voicemail or a text message or something. Um, but, hey, I've been thinking about you. I miss you. I know that we've got stuff and I know I've got stuff and I'd really like the opportunity for us to have coffee. If you're not ready for that, I am, but um, I love you and I, I would love to be able to move forward. And I do think it's important when you are face to face that obviously, you know, you ask, tell me how I hurt you. Tell me what shut us down so that I can ask for forgiveness because I want to you know, I, I'm going to say I'm responsible for, you know, it takes two in a relationship, right? Humility is the glue in a relationship. And it, and it, uh, we model what emotionally healthy relationships look like when we are humble. Yes. Well, and that's what Jesus calls us to do, right? To, 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 uh, be walk in the same humility in which he walked in. So for those who, um, I don't know that I actually gave the name of your book yet. I don't know if you we will definitely put it up in our B-roll, but if you have it, but I want everyone to know, and I was going to obviously, of course, do this again at the end, but the name of her first book, Patty's first book that we're talking about is called Face to Face, Face to Face, Smart Conversations with Yourself, Your Teenager, and Your Young Adult, and it is available um, at pattyreed.net. And of course, we'll have all this running across um, uh, the bottom of the screen uh, for you to be able to to look at and and order. Um, I love, Patty, I love giving hope to people who uh, feel hopeless. So thank you for that. I think that was really good. I think that being able to sit and and ask your adult child, where where did we go wrong? You know, what, what can I do? I think that's you know, you have to be, let, let's just, let's, let's, let's take a step farther because I always tell my clients, don't ask a question that you really don't want the answer to. <laughs> right. You know, it's like, don't, don't ask your husband if you look fat in those jeans, if you're not, looking for it, yes. Right. So what do we have to, what would you say to a parent 
about preparing themselves for something that may be very hurtful in the conversation. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And, you know, I'm, I'm glad that you asked that because um, so one thing that I was going to say just to back it is I do share that with you. Just listen. Yes. Don't defend yourself. But I this and I that. And, and I just listen. And I have been in situations with my children. My daughter is super open with me. And I think this is why we just have such a great relationship. And that is, you know, she has come to me before and said, you know, you really can't do that. And it makes me not want to talk to you and da, 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 da. And I listen. Yes. And then I say, will you please forgive me and please pray for me? (laughs) Yes. Yeah. So, so we have to be humble. Yes. I absolutely love that. I think that that shows such a special relationship when you can have that humility that is uh, and and to be able to talk like that. And that's that's what I want um our audience, our friends who will be listening to this to know that there is hope and and you know and I would add on to that if I may is just prepare yourself to try your best not to get emotional, right? Mm -hmm. Try your best to just be able to say, uh, and and many times when I'm talking to our boys or we're having a family meeting, we'll say, okay, we're just going to be talking. Um, And we we did this even when they were young, we're going to be talking. This is not personal. We're just trying to get, you know, get to get real answers. And, you know, you kind of set up the conversation, don't you? Yes. And well, I was going to say that. So, um, I like to, I have a little acronym that I use. Um, it's called PALS. And, um, but the P is for prime the conversation. When you prime the conversation, you prep it with yeah. prayer. Right. And, and we have a pre conversation with God. Absolutely. If you know that you're going into this conversation, asking Him for everything that, what should I say? What should I not say? Please, Holy Spirit. I mean, I'm tempted to give out, you know, colored duct tape at my, the times when I talk to people, right? Because we want to learn to be good listeners. This is people, people, your kids, your spouse want to be heard. Yes. And when we are heard, according to John Maxwell, and I'm sure lots of other people, but we feel loved. Yes. So that is so important. Yes. Yes. And in case anyone doesn't know, John Maxwell is one of the greatest uh, leader, teacher, speakers, writers in the world. He is a motivational speaker like none other. He's his books are amazing. Um, You mentioned, Patty, about listening. One of the things that um, that I have in one of my books, The Burdens of Blessings, is about listening. There's three parts. You you listen to what is being said. You listen to what is not being said. And you listen to what the Holy Spirit is saying to you. And those are, those are three things. But I love I love what you said. So tell me, what is, um, we talked about this just a little bit, but I want to get back to your book because I do hope that everyone will order it because it is one of those, it's a, it's a tool that we can use and it has so much, I love practical information. Um, and so you take God's promises and you make it very practical. Um, so talk to us about the format of your devotional and how, how easily people can use it. Yeah. Yeah. So there's 30 devotions. And uh, so basically there's, you know, the first part, which is the devotion. And then um, the next part is just a small, I love journaling. So I have a little section on journaling and I'll ask a question and that question may be for you. It may be something that you can ask your child. It's, it's, you know, different for each devotion. And then the next part is new possibility, which really is my favorite part because you know, you, like you mentioned earlier, I want to be a hope giver. Yes. And, you know, it's our hope. And so in that new possibility, how can I give them hope to think differently, to be differently in the relationship? And that's really the important thing is that again, as we go through these transitions in life with our kids, um, we, we have to show up differently. Because they're changing and hopefully we're changing and growing too. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, who do you want to be for your child in this moment when they come home from college and they've had the worst semester of their life? And are you going to be like giving them, you know, a hard time because they got C's? I don't know. Do you know what I'm saying? But, you know, love covers over a multitude of sins and, Mm -hmm. and, and caring and all of that just 
shines through all of that. So I love the I love giving them new possibilities to think and be differently. Absolutely. A prayer, a prayer at the end. Yeah, yeah absolutely. And, and I think it just um, it models models our relationship with our Heavenly Father. Yes. That openness without condemnation, the wisdom without judgment, um, you know, being able to run to him um, in any situation that we're in. And I think that, you know, you look back as a parent and you think, oh, I, c- I could have been stronger there and I could have been, mm-hmm. you know, better there. I don't believe in regret, but I do believe that we can take what we've learned. And you and I, as, as we have adult children, we can take what we've learned. And as we're still learning yes. and, and pass it along, because all this mm-hmm. conversation that is enriched in them as older teens and adults, it really does start as little people, doesn't it? Oh gosh. I mean, yeah, it does. I mean, and I wish that I knew certain things back then that I know now. Matter of fact, my son said to me, um, cause he saw kind of the different interaction with my daughter and he's like, why couldn't you learn that earlier? <laughs> I <was> like, I'm <laughs> sorry. sorry. <laughs> but we're good. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, that is, that is so great. All right. So um, I want you to just take just a minute. And as we're winding down, we have about two minutes left. Patty. Well, I know doesn't it goes by so fast. Tell me or tell our, tell our audience if, you know, your heart in them, if, if you're, if you're standing before, you know, lots of parents right now, and they're just confused in our day and our time, there's so much chaos going on. There's, so much dissension, there's so much worry. You know, what would you say to parents about reaching their children about, you know, the troubled world that we're in? Um, What would you say to them about honest communication and just talking about what really is unnerving them now? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yes. Well, first of all, I would push them to the Holy Spirit. I would push them to God to ask, how do I love them? How do I meet them? you know better than I know, God, what's going on with them. So would you please give me wisdom on how to interact with them for sure? And then I was thinking about um, that in one of in my signature talk that I do, I talk about loving well and listening well. And Mm -hmm. use uh, the Passion Translation from 1 Corinthians 13. Can I read that real quick? Oh, please. It's beautiful. It says, uh, love is large and incredibly patient. Love is gentle and consistently kind. It refuses to be jealous when blessing comes to someone else. Love does not brag about one's achievement nor inflate its own importance. Love does not traffic in shame and disrespect nor selfishly seek its own honor. Love is not easily irritated or quick to take offense. Love joyfully celebrates honesty and finds no delight in what is wrong. Mm And I just, I mean, I share that because that's it. That's it. Loving well and listening well. You do those two things and that will make a difference in your relationships. Absolutely. Absolutely. Uh, That is beautiful. That version, that translation is beautiful. Um, I want to just ask you one more thing uh, that came to my mind as you were reading that scripture uh, as a way of giving hope to what what if you have a parent and um, you know they've tried everything that you just talked about and there's still there's still this struggle? Um, would you suggest that they what what do you suggest to a parent? Do they do they step back and wait? Uh, what's your suggestion to someone who it just is not it's not connecting right now? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, again, I'm always going to go to prayer. I'm always going to go, you know, because the Lord is going to strengthen you. During that time to stand strong, I have someone that I talk to often that has that situation Mm -hmm. and she's kept me abreast of kind of like things that have gone on. But I would just say that, again, the prayer is important. And I would say that, you know, I don't know, once a month, drop them a card. I love you. Right. Just don't expect anything or don't just, I mean, that's what God does with us or, you know, with me before I started walking with him. and so. That's what I would encourage people to do, because who doesn't want to be told they're loved? Absolutely. And most of the time, the anger or the resentment uh, that causes that division, a lot of times there is some pain and 
it's they just need to be told and, and noticed. So I love that. Well, Patty, our time is up. Thank you so much for joining us. Would you please uh, tell our audience how they can reach out to you, how they can get your books, maybe perhaps if they want, would like for you to come speak at their church? How would they do that? Yes. Thank you so much. So you can find me on Amazon for sure. Yeah. Um, but I do have a website. It's pattyreed.net. Mm-hmm. Patty, P-A-T-T-I-R-E-E-D.net. Uh, and again, the book is available through my website or on Amazon. I'm also on Facebook, LinkedIn, Instagram. So uh, yeah, that's how you can reach me. Well, that's great. And I know that a lot of people will reach out to you. And I, you know, audience, I can't even tell you enough how much I've enjoyed the book. And I think that it just has so much practical um, tools in it. And, and that's what that I don't use that word often, Patty, tools, but it is like a tool book. I mean, it, you just go to it for what is hurting at that moment. So mm-hmm. thank you for pouring your time into it mm-hmm. and studying this. And it has been a pleasure having you, my friend. And I look forward to doing more with you maybe mm-hmm. in the future. Thank you, Kim, so much. I've loved it. All right. We'll see you next time. Mm-hmm. Bye, everyone. And thank you so much for joining us for coffee. We'll see you next time. Bye, everybody. As well.